Hello, I'm Andy Clark. I'm one of the consulting authors on the Singapore math program called Math and Focus. And I'd like to thank you for taking a few minutes to allow me to show you how we teach multiplication and division in fourth and fifth grade and how we help students solve problems that involve multiplication and division. Hopefully, this will be helpful to you when your child comes to you and asks for help with their homework. In today's world of calculators and computers, it's not enough to simply calculate accurately, although it's very important that you do that too, but students must understand what they're doing. We want students who can calculate on paper and pencil, who can calculate mentally, and most of all, who can calculate when they solve problems with multiplication and division. So we make a special effort to have students understand what they're doing, especially when we're multiplying with numbers greater than 10. We want students, for instance, who understand, let's say, when they're multiplying 12 times 15, we want them to be able to visualize that quickly in their head so they say, well, that's easy, that's 10 15s is 150, or, and 2 15s is 30, 150 and 30 is 180. Or, even if they're going to use, let's say, the paper pencil method that you and I often use, we want them to be able to see or visualize what they're doing, understand what they're doing. So we would show them, often in school, we would have these chips in which we would show them, model what it is that we're doing. We'd say, okay, we have 15, we know we have 15, that's five ones and one ten. And first what we want to find out is, we want to know what 2 times 5 is or what 2 groups of 5 is, right? We don't start with the 10s on paper and pencil. We say 2 5s, and that's simple. We've got 2 of these 5s. child knows 2 5s is 10. So we tell them we're going to take the 10 ones and make it into 1 10. We don't call this a 1. We call this a 10, right? And we put it up here. And then we say 2 times 10, not 2 times 1. 2 times 10 is 20, right? And so then we have 30. Are we done? Not yet, we still have to do 10 times 5, 10 groups of 5 here, 10 fives, that's 50, right? 50 is, what, 5 tens, okay, we've got 5 tens, and then what? We still have 10 times 10 is 100, right? And now we put these down here, and what do we have all together? 150 and 30, 180. In other words, this is the same way that you and I multiply, but we want students to understand what it is they're doing when they do it. Even when they multiply hard numbers like 45 times 123, we still want them to think about ones and tens and hundreds. And the same for long division as well. So if we're dividing 500, for instance, in 25, we would have the students build the problem 525, and we would say 525 divided by 3, each person gets 100, we have 200 left. How many, what are we gonna do? Trade them in for 20 tens, very good, and so on and so forth. So we want students to understand what they're doing when they do the paper pencil kinds of procedures that you and I know how to do. We even want students then to be able to solve pretty complicated word problems, okay? And I think you've seen by now the level of some of these problems, they're pretty challenging. Let me read you one here that uh, is in a fifth grade book. Here's a sample. Kim had 5,000 grams of flour in a jar, and she bought a 4,000 gram bag of flour. Students do need to practice metric measurements too, you know. And she poured some flour from the bag into the jar. Now the jar has twice as much flour as the bag. How much flour is in the bag? Confused? I am, I'm not sure what to do here. So what we tell children to do, we encourage them to draw a picture of the models, to model what the problem is. And we know she has a jar with 5,000 grams of flour in it, right? And then she goes and buys a bag with 4,000 grams of flour in it, right? I've got those two pictures now, two bars, right? And what happens? She gives some from the bag into the jar. We don't know how much she gives, but she knows that when she's done giving it, that the jar has twice as much, right? Well, how many grams did she have altogether? 9,000. So let's think. There's twice as much in the jar as there is in the bag, right? But she still has 9,000 grams. If each of these is the same, then this one must be 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, 6,000 in the jar, and the answer to the question, 3,000 grams. So can you see how drawing the picture helps the students solve these, these very complicated problems? 
So what can you do at home to help your child? Well, one of the things I hope you see is how important it is that children know how to multiply by 10 and by 100 and then by multiples of 10 and 100. So if you can, play a game with your child. You say a digit, 7, and the child has to say what's 10 times 7 and what's 100 times 7. Okay, and then your child will give you a digit and you do the same thing back at them. Make it fun when you're standing in line at the grocery or you're riding in the car. Um, the more children practice this, the better they get at it. And then when they get good, then you might want to start some harder problems like what's 20 times a single digit? Let's say 6. What's 20 times 6? And your child may think, well, 10 times 6 is 60 times 2 is 120. Or maybe they may say 6 times 2 is 12 times 10 is 120. What we don't want them doing is just adding zeros. We want them thinking tens, hundreds, and so on. And the more they do it, the better they'll get at, at multiplying by larger numbers. What else can you do? When your child comes home with homework, and some of it's hard and challenging, really encourage them to keep trying. Help them understand that it's the hard problems that make their minds grow. If the problems are easy, they're not really learning as much as when the problems are hard. So encourage them to keep, to keep trying. And also encourage them to draw pictures, make a model to help them solve problems when they're not sure what else to do. In conclusion, I hope you'll see that the more your child practices, the better they will get. And the better they get in math, the more they will like it. And we know how important multiplication and division are in real life. We want students who can do this and like doing it and I think your children will be much more successful with your encouragement and our teaching. Thanks for taking the time.